Aside from our previous video, there's still some information you need to know about Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbits. Heat Stroke During the summers or if you are in areas where the temperature can be extreme, heat stroke is truly something that rabbit owners must pay attention to. Usually, this is because rabbits live in cages that might be well insulated. Because of the heat, your rabbits need to be kept in the shade with lots of water. Extreme heat is something that can quickly get to these Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbits. So if you notice them feeling lethargic and it is quite warm outside, you need to act much quicker. Owners can decrease bodily temperatures by spraying them gently with cold water. If they stay lethargic, the rabbits must be taken to the veterinarian for them to be treated with some four fluids. But for avoiding heat strokes, owners can provide the rabbits with some frozen water bottles. They can lie down next to these bottles and absorb some of the cool. Another option would be to blow a fan on your rabbits indirectly so cooler air can circulate around them. GI status. GI status can be considered a fatal and serious disease. Your best bet is to completely prevent the disease by feeding their rabbits a diet that is high in fiber, which will mean giving those lots of hay. However, you will recognize GI status because your rabbit can become bloated, lethargic, losing its appetite, not drink fluids, and also become constipated. If the bunny starts to show any of these signs, it is important to give them lots of hay and fluids. You should also massage their bellies from time to time. But, if there is still no visible movement, it might be a better option to consult with a veterinarian. Illnesses like this one could potentially lead to surgery. Bloat Bloating is something that can be fatal to rabbits and is not a simple problem to encounter. This disease can be detected when the rabbit's stomach blows up like a balloon and starts to swell. Bloating also happens due to an imbalance of bacteria in your bunny's tummy whenever they eat too much green food, not having to eat enough fiber for their diet, having irregular feeding schedules, eating wet grass clippings, and eating spoiled food. This is something that all rabbit owners should keep in mind when seeking to care for their rabbits. You should clearly pay attention to the things that you feed your rabbits. You should also monitor their feces and make sure that everything looks or it should. Breeding The exact method of mating that was done by Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbits is still fairly unknown. But, experts speculate that these rabbits are similar to the other species where males dominate the sexual hierarchy, where they decide and manipulate mating with the females. In their natural habitat, the Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbits breed from February through July of each year. Every 12 months, the females can be able to produce up to three litters of young, and each litter can consist of about six hatchlings at a time. When the female pygmy rabbits get pregnant, they start digging and supplying their material for nesting to the burrows that they have constructed. A few days before the females give birth, these rabbits can be found nursing their young towards the entrance of the burrow. After they have nursed their young, the baby rabbits usually return to the burrow, and the mother rabbit will fill the burrow entrance with some loose soil. This is an active defense to serve as protection against the detection of predators. Feeding In the wild, Columbia Basin pygmy rabbits are herbivores and usually feed on sagebrush. During the winters, their diet is made up of about 98% sagebrush. They eat the leaves, seeds, grains, nuts, bark, stems, roots, and tubers of this plant. But during the rest of the year, especially in the summers, they vary their diet to include more foliage and grass. Availability. Pygmy rabbits are not typically taken up as pets, and it is mainly because of their high dependence on the sagebrush plants. If you want to own a Columbia Basin pygmy rabbit, you can take chances with online breeders and animal shelters for adoption. Usually, this is a hard case. But, you can help support their cause by virtually adopting a rabbit through wildlife foundations. Taking care of Columbia Basin pygmy rabbits. Columbia Basin pygmy rabbits are outdoor animals. These rabbits love to live in burrows, which they dig holes in the ground for. These dens also provide them areas where they can take care of their young. This breed has adapted to life in the sagebrush desert, so they are not really recommended for caring in captivity. If you ever encounter a Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbi, you should try and observe the following caring tips. Buy a cage that is large enough to provide space for movement to your pet rabbit. Although the rabbit spends a lot of time outside of their cage, these rabbits must still be provided with their own safe haven where they can find rest away from everything else. This is where the rabbit will find some solace to sleep during the night and where it can choose to find privacy whenever they feel unsafe and unsafe. Buy some bedding that you can use so that you can line the cage. The bedding that they use is dependent on which one your rabbit will like the best. Some common options can be hay, paper, and straw. Some substrates that you can use include cedar, pine, and other shavings. Rabbit owners should stay away from choosing wood shavings so that the rabbits cannot be inhaled by accident. 
Purchase a heavy ceramic food bowl and a water bowl. Getting your rabbit is a ceramic food bowl will make sure that the bowl will not topple over even when they eat them. Just make sure that the bowl is low enough for your rabbit to eat comfortably. The water bowl is the more natural way for a rabbit to get their hydration needs, unlike a water bottle for a cage that just tends to annoy rabbits. Feed your rabbit with plenty of hay and other food items they need. The ideal food for rabbits is grass and hay, and for Columbia Basin Pygmy rabbits, they prefer eating sagebrush. Just make sure to provide them with lots of fiber for their digestive requirements. Supplement the diet of your rabbits with some fresh fruit and vegetables. Common vegetables to include are cabbage, bok choy, broccoli, kale, carrots, bristles sprouts, collards, cilantro, and beet tops. Avoid giving colorful fruits to your rabbits as they are high in sugar and carbohydrates. If you are unsure about the type of food to give to your pet, ask your veterinarian for their advice. Avoid giving too many carrot tops to your rabbit, because, unlike popular belief, too many carrots can be harmful to your rabbits. Provide your rabbit with cage enrichments and toys for your rabbits. Just like other pets, rabbits need a supply of toys to keep them entertained. You can buy a variety of toys for them, like tunnels, chewing toys, and mazes with cardboard and holes. A great homemade chew toy that you can use is a twig from an applewood tree. Just clean it thoroughly before use. Make sure that you have enough time and energy to care for your rabbit. Rabbits are generally low-maintenance animals because they require the same amount of care, money, and time as other domestic pets like cats and dogs. These animals still have individual personalities and require special care that even if you research, you can still be surprised by their behavior. Spend at least three hours a day with your rabbit outside of their cage, but they also need time to spend inside their cage as well. If your rabbit does not get to interact with you, they might get depressed. If you cannot provide your rabbit all of the attention that they need, you should probably get another rabbit so that they will have someone to spend time with. Let your rabbit out of their cage so that they can explore. Once you have established a relationship with your rabbit, you should allow your pet to explore your home. Just make sure that you have rabbit-proofed your home and close all the doors or entrances before finalizing your decision. For the first time, just sit in the middle of the room and discreetly supervise what your rabbit would do. Enjoy interaction with your rabbit. Once your rabbit comes out of its cage, allow it to hop around on its own. Allow your rabbit to scent you, play with it a little, and talk quietly to your pet. Do not move too quickly so your rabbit will not get too scared. If you enjoyed this video, kindly press the like button. Also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Thank you for watching.